Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin, and today I am talking all things IAPS. I know you have been looking for this video for a while, and I didn't want to come out with it until I fully understood what IAPS was like being on it for a good amount of time. I've been on it for 10 days. We're only focusing on the first day, but I feel like I have enough information to talk to you about it go through that first day and show you what it was like, what I've learned from it. After using this for roughly two weeks, um, let's just say I've eaten three bagels since I've refined my settings, didn't go over 160. See that back there? Yeah, my blood sugar's a little elevated. It's 208, it's starting to curve. That's from breakfast that I ate probably 20 minutes ago. It was yogurt and granola with some eggs. I bolused right before I ate it, barely a pre-bolus. That's pretty darn good. I can see that that's gonna go down. We'll, let, we'll see throughout this video if that's what happens. Uh, but first, let's start with what is IAPS? IAPS stands for Artificial Pancreas System. It's for iPhone. It is an experimental DIY automated insulin delivery system. It is controlled on an iPhone and it's using an algorithm that has been around for some time on Android. Android APS and free APS. The algorithm's been around. It's OREF1. It's different than DIY Loop, a different algorithm, a much different app. I've reported on IAPS a bit on my podcast. I spoke to two admins all about their experience, and one of them doesn't even bolus on the system. And that's what was so intriguing to me. The fact that there could be a system out there that you don't really need to have user input. It just manages your pancreas on its own. I mean, that's the goal, right? That is a full closed loop system and uh, I'm not there yet and I'm not gonna rush to it either. And I may never get there. I may always have to log carbs. Part of what makes IAPS's algorithm so powerful are its dynamic settings. There are a few of these settings that will change every five minutes based off of the last two weeks of data and the last 24 hours. This is the ISF, the insulin sensitivity factor, that is dynamic. The carb ratio is dynamic. I have seen the dynamic settings get stronger and stronger because obviously on the first day, it doesn't have two weeks of data to pull from. It has less than a day's worth of information. And then I found that the, the algorithm got stronger and stronger over time. I was also updating settings as well. It's a destabilizing process, switching to new technology or new treatment with your chronic illness. This is your health, you know? And um, I felt that, and luckily I had a few people helping me along the way that I could talk to. And I also would recommend people do that as well. Speaking of recommendations, this is not a medical recommendation. This is not medical advice. This is for educational purposes only, and it's my experience using IAPS. You should always consult with a physician before making any changes to your healthcare. I just wanna show you my experience using this, what I've learned, what I've taken from it, and hopefully help you, if you decide to go this route, better understand IAPS and kind of what to look out for when you start it. I've got links to IAPS resources, the Facebook group, the website are in the description so you can learn a lot more over there. Now that we've got all of that covered, let's get into the first day on IAPS. Good morning, I just woke up. Today is the day I'm getting on IAPS. Let's go put on the pump and See how this goes. Before getting on the system, I had a meeting with Teresa from my podcast episode. If you haven't heard that, you have to. She doesn't bolus using the system. Uh, she just lets it do its own thing, and she has great range, 80% and more. She helped me understand my settings, what they what they could be. And, and also my diabetes educator, Mary Rose, who's coming on my podcast. I also spoke with her uh, to take a look at my settings. We decided to start with conservative settings. We, we saw what the settings should be, and then we made them less strong. We decided to turn on all dynamic settings. Not everyone's going to decide to do this. In fact, I believe on the website, it may even mention that they don't recommend that. Uh, but I did decide to turn on dynamic settings. I wanted the app to start learning what my insulin sensitivity factor is and what my carb ratio is over time. So th those have been on since day one. And I had sigmoid function off at the beginning. I actually do wind up turning that on a few, a few days later. Putting on the pump was just like DIY loop. In fact, 
the app on the iPhone, specifically that feature was pulled directly from DIY Loop's iPhone app and put into the code for IAPS. The screens look exactly the same. So it felt like home as I was putting on a new pump. Insert cannula. Okay, I'm gonna log my breakfast, which is gonna be 45 grams of carbs. Save and continue. Then it's gonna recommend 3.1 grams of insulin, sorry, units of insulin. And I'm going to enact bolus, face ID. And then I got a confirmation on the pump. I'm actually gonna turn that off because I don't like hearing the beeps. It's going. Math is happening. I'm nervous, excited, scared, hopeful, and optimistic. Right off the bat, after I logged breakfast, there were a few things that kind of unsettled me or, or, or worried me. One was the fact that on this application, there was no way to program exactly like glycemic index through emojis. What I loved about DIY Loop is that I could choose between like a lollipop, taco, or pizza emoji. DIY Loop's algorithm adjusts the carb decay based on the emojis selected. It assumes all the carbs entered will be absorbed, no more and no less, and times the insulin based on those entries. Glycemic index isn't necessary on IAPS. It assumes no carbs are absorbed until they start showing in your blood sugars. Entering carbs gives IAPS more info to make better adjustments, but it doesn't make changes until it sees carbs impacting your blood sugars. When the unannounced meal setting is turned on, it can be more aggressive because it treats until absorption stops, regardless of how long it takes. But it does not treat until absorption starts and it makes no future assumptions about those carbs. You could enter 500 grams of carbs, not bolus, and IAPS wouldn't do anything unless your glucose changes. Another thing that's intimidating is the home screen. Look at all those lines, all these different factors that the algorithm's using to get you where it wants you to go. You can see in the bottom corner, it shows you where where your blood sugar is expected to go based off of all these calculations. It's a bit weird to see all of this information. I think on most other systems, you don't see that. And, and on DIY loop, you did get one line that would show you where you're going. But e and even that sometimes kind of worried me because it was as if that for on the DIY loop is it was showing you where you would go if you didn't get any more insulin after that, that very moment. This is not a cleared system by the FDA. This is very experimental. Uh, and very, very techy because the people using this and building it are very, very techy people. They want to see all this information. And an average person like me may not want to see all this stuff. I just want it to do its job. But hey, I'm learning about it and I'll understand it more over time. I'm going into WeWork today and I'm bringing a lot of stuff just in case. First of all, glucagon, just in case I get so low, I need this. Um, I want to have this on me for a while while I start this, at least the first few weeks to a month. Then I've got a bunch of low snacks. I've got like a ton of them. And then I'm also bringing an extra pump just in case I need to switch back to my other system, DIY loop. So let's go into WeWork. It's my first day on IAPS, a DIY automated insulin system. I had overnight oats for breakfast and I also had cold brew with oat milk. Typically, my blood sugar would spike after that. I'd go over 180, maybe stay up there. My blood sugar three hours after I ate is 157, and I have a straight line. Look at this Dexcom app. Look at that straight line. I barely went up. Well, I spiked up, stopped at 190, and it brought me right back down. This would have never happened on my DIY loop, and I don't think that this would happen on FDA cleared systems either. All right, I'm gonna get back to my day, but um, yeah, I'm impressed. Breakfast seemingly went well. I was overwhelmingly surprised by how well IAPS was able to take in that information, manage my sugar levels, not let me spike too much and kind of slowly bring me back down. What I thought was a success may have been a bit of a fluke because later in the day, things don't necessarily stay as controlled. I, I was ready, and I think a lot of people getting on this will be ready for it to just magically work. That's not how life works, I don't think, and it's also not how IAPS works. Do not expect the first day to be perfect, not have to bolus, any, any of that. And I went into it hoping and thinking that it would be perfect, and breakfast got me excited, but I think it may have just been luck. 
What I realized after day one, and I'll talk about it later, was that there were still settings to finesse. Later that afternoon, I went home and had some lunch. For lunch, we've got meatballs, some spicy meatballs, and some lettuce. So, oh, arugula. Typically, I would give myself just a teensy bit of carbs locked into my system, maybe like seven. Not gonna do that today. I'm gonna leave IAPS up to the task of doing it's gotta do my blood sugar. I think it's about 117 right now. Um, and it's got this like really steady line, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see what happens after I eat. It is currently 115 and we'll check back in in a few hours to see how it went. Lunch is ready. Um, also while I have you, this is the Brava and I use it to cook all of my stuff. It uses six oscillating light bulbs uh, that are in there to cook different sides of the tray at different rates. So you can do asparagus and salmon. Anyway, I just cooked my meatballs and uh, it's time to eat. Uh, there's a link to the Brava if you want to check it out in the description. And lunch is served. Lunch was super tasty and what I did was I waited four hours to see where my blood sugar levels went to see once that kind of did its thing in my system where my uh, levels would be. It is 5 p.m. I ate at 1.30 and currently my blood sugar I believe is, oh there it is, it's 142. Um, okay, hasn't really gone down to what my target is. I think my target is 110. I'm actually about to go to an event where I'm gonna be like on a panel and a speaker for the pediatric diabetes floor, uh, which will be super nice and get to meet some people and answer some questions. So, uh, and there's gonna be dinner there. So let's see, let's see how that goes. Oh, and that's, that's getting fixed. And I got to speak to a ton of kids and their parents about my diagnosis on TikTok, diabetes technology and, and the promise of it, and also just being proud of your diabetes tech and educating other people about it. It just was like a really fulfilling moment for me and I hope to do more speaking events like that. I, I wanna give back. While at that event, they had some of the hard to, hardest to eat foods, <laughs> which is so funny. Um, there was pizza and then there were cookies. So I ate a bunch of pizza, I ate cookies. I'm logging the carbs as I normally would on my DIY loop. And when I got home from the event, my blood sugar was a bit high. We are officially having the first high on the IAPS. So we've got 214. Um, it could continue to go up. I'm trying not to meddle in it, but I may add some extra carbs if needed. Let's see how the rest of the night goes. I decided though, I wasn't going to meddle with this system. I need it to learn from what is actually happening, not plug in fake carbs. That's, that's a habit that I got into with DIY loop was feeling the need to plug in fake carbs later on. I am not doing that with IAPS. I want IAPS to fully understand my carb intake. And I think I have carb counting down pretty well and kind of move forward with that and, and truly refine the system. That is my first day on IAPS. It was an interesting experience. Things do get better, uh, and I learned a lot. One is if and when someone gets onto a DIY system or any system, it is destabilizing, it is unsettling, it is scary. That is okay, that is normal. Another thing I realized about IAPS is there is so much user control and that is not gonna be for everyone. When I went to enact a bolus, sometimes the font would be red and it would say, well, you're gonna go low before you get back into range by doing this, which was a scary message to receive for the app to allow me to bolus but also say that I'm gonna go low. There were other messages like this on the app that would happen too. It would recommend carbs for me. So if I was going low, it would recommend that I intake some, some extra carbs. Overall, I think IAPS does need a better design for its user experience and its user interface. For technical people, it's all there, it's easy to access, but I think it may need to be cleaned up for the everyday user. But I definitely wouldn't recommend this for most people. Most people who want a closed loop system with Omnipod should use Omnipod 5. If they want a little more advanced control, DIY loop is a fantastic option. IAPS, while the algorithm may be way more superior, which, I've, which I have experienced over the last two weeks as I've refined my settings, it may not be the right one for a lot of people because there's a lot of work that goes into it and you definitely don't want to do it alone. And I'm fortunate to have not done it alone and to have people help guide me, but everyone may not get the guidance that I've been able to get. 
Uh, but I, I think you can also find that on the Facebook group and the Discord. So I'm going to have another video come out soon with a more advanced explanation of everything I've learned and experienced with IAPS. I just wanted to take you through this first day. I do continue to make changes on day two, six, and seven. And since day seven, and I'm on day almost 14, I think, um, I have not made changes since day seven. And sugar levels have been fantastic. Since then, I've eaten three bagels, never went over 160. Last night, I ate McDonald's. I had a shake, french fries, and chicken nuggets. I like really wanted to put things to the test. I put in 125 plus 18 grams, whatever, 143 grams of carbs. My blood sugar went maybe to 220 and then came back down pretty quickly too. That surprised me. And IAPS continues to surprise me. So next time I talk about IAPS on this channel in the next few weeks will be more of a two-week, three-week recap of my experience, everything I've learned, everything I found interesting about the app, this, I just really wanted to take you into that first day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about IAPS that are lingering, let us know in the comments. If you're using IAPS, I, I encourage you to speak with others, to tell them about your experience, um, because all the, uh, at the end of the day, we're a community together and we're not waiting. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. That way other people can see it. And subscribe to this channel and give that bell a click or click that bell for alerts. That way you get alerts when my videos drop on YouTube. I've got my podcast every Monday, but the YouTube videos kind of drop whenever I want them to. So stay tuned for another IAPS. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Eat what you want to eat and don't be too hard, hard on yourself uh, for your sugar levels. All right, I'm Justin and I'll take you later.